But then uh, we have our last speaker before the break, which uh, brings us uh, to an Italian experience uh, within a European context. And this is the experience of Casa Don Bosco in Turin. And it's uh, the experience of the Don Bosco House Museum in Turin, reflections and actions regarding the cultural heritage of the Salesians of Don Bosco in Piedmont and Valle d'Aosta. And this is uh, the result of uh, a collaboration and a coordination in the architecture and design uh, faculty of the Turin University, which has been led by Ms. Bartolozzi, Cristian Bezzo, Fabio Aldo Cerato, Stefania De Vita, and Francesco Novelli. Obviously, they won't all speak. <laughs> I suppose you'll be swapping and sharing. Yes, uh, we can hear. Yes, you're very welcome to sit up here. Are you? So we have uh, Christian Besso representing the Salesian community. Professor, uh, she's not new to the research that has been done in uh, Piemonte. Stefania De Vita. With regards uh, uh, to this, she is uh, one of the first scholars to actually look into this. And uh, uh, we have uh, also. Um, Cristiana Besso with us, uh, who will be speaking about uh, the experience of the Don Bosco Museum in Turin. So thank you, thank you for this opportunity, and we're happy to be able to speak together, especially after a general chapter that we had. We felt the need uh, to read uh, with different eyes the charismatic uh, heritage, cultural heritage of uh, our congregation uh, that uh, could be uh, could help us uh, to the reuse of uh, certain buildings uh, in connection with the past experience of uh, Don Bosco. Father Bosco. So this is why, in collaboration with the University of Turin, we uh, managed to find uh, uh, what was the right space to do so, and also the global specific characteristics needed uh, for our Salesian architecture and how to how to promote this. So that's why we have uh, the um, well, the person in charge of the museum and architect uh, who have helped us with the project. And now I give them the floor. So we thank the Scientific Commission for having chosen our work. And before uh, we uh, briefly present uh, the different and the main steps that led us uh, to the accomplishment uh, of this museum house, uh, Father Bosco, we would like to share with you a short video that will allow us uh, to enter and to go through the main gate of the museum and to have a peek inside. In origine era la luce che illuminava una tettoia. Una tettoia che è diventata casa dove immergersi tra sogni, emozioni e sorrisi. Dove scrivere il futuro. E oggi questa casa arriva fino a noi. E allora chiudiamo gli occhi e guardiamo. Vedremo i ragazzi andare a prendere pietre al fiume e incastonarle nel muro del refettorio, un po' per gioco, un po' per fare la propria parte. Li vedremo riempire i corridoi di gioia, mentre mamma Margherita tenta di cucinare, sistemare e prendersi cura di tutti loro. Vedremo Don Bosco nel porticato della buonanotte dare l'ultimo pensiero della giornata ai suoi ragazzi. Lo vedremo scrivere e pregare nella sua casa. So you have uh, here the house uh, with the bed, so you can see where Father Bosco slept, where he studied, where he lived, uh, and then here where he did, and we can see where he was printing everything that he wrote to share with others uh, and help Salesians. Uh, 
how to help solutions uh, live out this charism and witness it uh, in their own times. We'll see the faith, the devotion. Uh, we we'll see uh, and we'll touch it uh, uh, through the objects and the uh, images uh, that are shown. And we'll see the times of Father Bosco, the 800s, time of uh, suffering, but also of arts and new uh, ways, new paths, and new realities. The Grace Alicia family. So you'll see the life and the history and the love and the light. Uh, and then we know how this is uh, to uh, be given to the world and how to be shared with others. So welcome, welcome back to the origins. Welcome to uh, the Casa Don Bosco, the house of Don Bosco. Considerato il valore simbolico. So considering the symbolic value of the buildings attached to the Basilica of uh, uh, Mary, Help of Christians, as the mother house of the Salesian congregation, and more in general uh, of the Salesian family, the journal, the 27th general chapter of uh, 2014 had established a full, or had decided on a full renovation of the spaces that were original to the works of St. John Bosco, of Father Bosco, and that witnessed the rise of the oratory and the religious community that he actually founded. So following two repeated and thorough inspections uh, and uh, on the site of uh, the first religious house uh, with the adjoining churches uh, of the origins, uh, a project was developed that provided uh, the enhancement uh, and uh, the uh, valorization of the small devotional museum related to the original rooms of, uh, of uh, Father Bosco and founded in 1930. We have therefore gone from 10 rooms uh, uh, which is a total of 400 square meters uh, to a current museum space of 4,000 square meters uh, that has rediscovered and uh, has enhanced and uh, given new value to the two historical, uh, the at least two historical elements. So first, the original spaces of domestic life and service of the religious house at the hospice uh, of young, well, the, the, the guest house for young people of the years uh, between 1853 and 1927, and the collections called Salesian Center of Historical and Popular Marian Documentation, the treasure of the basilica, and also the deposits of the mother house, uh, the storage house. It is necessary to remember that these historical spaces and collections had fallen into oblivion have been forgotten and had led in degradation for various reasons. Uh, well, the, first of all, the destination of the original spaces used as a warehouse, excluding any possible valorization and architectural interest. The um, cataloging that was done very superficially, the lack, well, managed with devotional um, attention but not scientific uh, criteria and the lack of awareness of the antiquity and of the artistic and historical value of some movable goods. So this uh, patrimony, this heritage was therefore only minimally exposed to the public for them to see. The new museum, uh, Casa Don Bosco, uh, was thus established taking root mainly on two strong points two pillars. The first was uh, the study, study restoration and devalorization of the environment so as to allow a good use of uh, well, to the public and good access. Uh, the museum, even before being a mere container, uh, becomes in itself the narrative starting point of the history of the places of the origins. Uh, now, the second strong point was uh, the formation um, in an orderly and scientific way of a real, real collection, the result of uh, the three previous ones. Uh, this collection has been catalogued, restored, and has been documented through photographic and digital work, uh, which is always in progress, so ongoing. The choice of the objects uh, has then followed some criteria, such as the harmony between the aesthetic value and also the uh, charismatic symbolic meaning. So these two strong points have led uh, to the creation of uh, an exhibition space that can be used by a vast and heterogeneous public. Uh, 
the museum while presenting an explicit uh, uh, real uh, reality of the ecclesiastical life and uh, hagiographic experience wishes to be an inclusive space and a space uh, of dialogue which is useful to the path of evangelization and pastoral service. The beauty and the history of the Salesian historical and charismatic patrimony are actually fruitful opportunities for the proclamation of the gospel and for the initial and ongoing formation of those who feel called to uh, education, to the activities of education evangelization. However, According to the characteristics of uh, the preventive system of Father Bosco linked to reason, religion, and loving kindness, this space is a place of encounter, of dialogue, and ideal maturation, hence the name of the museum, Home, Casa. The four colors are blue, soil color, uh, the earth color, purple, and gold, and the four symbols of the logo with the square and the triangle and the circle, accompany the visitors to meet the characters and objects, uh, the everyday life of a house, uh, some artistic and artisan or craft excellencies, and the history of the city, the dialogue with the territory, and the specifics of the charismatic adventure. The blue and its uh, Hourglass underlying the Marian collection and the historical environment of the basement that is refectory, that is the refectory of the origins of the past in 1858 and the first kitchen of the oratory later on. These rooms have been restored with a philological interest following the contemporary conservation criteria and respecting the choice of materials, uh, respecting it in the choice of materials above all, uh, the environmental protection, the color. So. Uh, the choice of the materials was uh, keeping in mind the environmental protection and the color and the square are characteristic of the ground floor and emphasize the theme of the courtyard that coincides with the spaces immediately usable by visitors. One of the central elements of this floor is the well-known Porticato della Buonanotte, which is uh, the place where you would say good night, which has been brought back to the essentiality and truth of the early 19th century. The violet color and the triangle are typical of the second floor where some ancient altarpieces uh, that go back to the first liturgical setting of the Basilica and the historical portraits of St. John Bosco. Some showcases are then are actually dedicated for the first time to some key historical figures of the Salesian experience, among which is St. Joseph Cafasso. The very the, the second floor, which is quite big, characterized by the color gold and the circle is entirely under the sign of holiness and the central element remains the saint's room and his relics ex indumentis. Next to the room there are manuscripts relating to the foundation of the Salesian congregation. There are documents uh, regarding the first missionary expeditions uh, and a vast uh, truly vast collection of objects aimed at highlighting the charismatic figures who have contributed with their holiness to the spreading of the spiritual and charismatic proposal of Don Bosco. Perhaps an element not to be forgotten and the original within a museum it was actually the provision of a chapel designed according to current liturgical norms uh, criteria with a particular aesthetic care, even though quite sober. Thank you. Proseguiamo con questa. So we move on now to the second part, which is the result of this uh, coordinated study that we are attempting to introduce and present to you. So the experience of the Don Bosco House Museum that we just uh, presented here, not only is a new and original approach to the Salesian world and origins, but also an opportunity to recover the values uh, and the memory of the Salesian charism and all the uh, patrimony that is strongly connected with it. The peculiarity of the Salesian architecture, architectural patrimony, on the other hand, is ready, already contained in the founding principles of the congregation itself, uh, which has always been 
managing function of the Salesian charism as clearly expressed in Article 187 uh, of the Constitutions. Um, uh, and I quote, the Salesian society has the capacity to acquire possess, administer, and alienate temporal goods. And this applies to the congregation, to the individual provinces, and to each house. These goods are not to be uh, so in the name of an individual or are to be kept only insofar as they are directly useful for the works. The purchase and conservation of uh, uh, real estate or of properties uh, is for the sole purpose of earning an income uh, is to be excluded. So the Salesian congregation is a relatively recent institution. He's really, they're really going very fast. If seen in a historical perspective referring to the panorama of religious orders, however, today it enjoys a patrimony uh, of great consistency, which is originated from the first five houses uh, and that uh, was documented back in 1870, located in the area that um, uh, now is known as Turin, uh, and that has extended over um, the uh, the territory, and that now has uh, increased also its um, properties. And 10 years later, it has extended all the way to the missionary houses in South America, such as the uh, ones in Argentina, founded in 1876, and updated the uh, um, Study has uh, shown that there are 13,671 Salesian uh, uh, brothers and 443 novices, uh, 134 uh, countries, that's where they're present, and 90 provinces. Uh, and uh, that is a total of uh, 1,728 houses. Um, the province uh, to which uh, the Don Bosco house belongs is the special circumscription Piedmont Aosta Valley and includes 36 Salesian communities. Uh, so the patrimony, uh, so this heritage uh, is strongly marked by a precise will of Father Bosco himself to give to the physical presence uh, of uh, the buildings that uh, he was actually inviting to build from the second half of the 19th century, an expression of strong recognition. recognition sorry. This is thanks to a system of planning of the institutes that made use of architects and engineers who were always very close to the congregation. And there was a recognition also of those uh, functional elements uh, that in the rereading of the heritage itself highlight a strong and repeated character, the church, the courtyard, the garden, the portico, bright environments, and symbols leaves covered by vaulted ceilings interspersed with... <laughs> she was interrupted. I'm sorry, I was reading. I thought it was enough. Uh, yes, it's fine. It's just, she is just going very quickly. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're just, you know, we're running behind, and that's why I was reading this, this quickly. I apologize. I'll slow down. Thank you for that on behalf of the interpreters. So this uh, mentality so highlights the aspects um, that uh, are intrinsic to the uh, value, uh, the Salesian value, and highlight uh, highlight the strong and repeated elements such as the church, the courtyard, the garden, the portico, the bright environments, the simple sleeves covered by uh, the vaulted ceilings interspersed with arches in succession. So this is what is written in the document Bonamico of 2016. So once the buildings uh, had to uh, stop being used uh, for the original use and uh, the, uh, there was a new way of uh, making this reuse uh, more practical and uh, respectful of uh, the um, desire of Father Bosco. Already at the behest of Don Bosco himself, the consideration of the architectural patrimony moved along different lines, actually. So through all sustain, though all sustained by the functional need dictated by the mission of education and evangelization. This can be seen in the cases of the original nucleus of St. Francisco de Sales, uh, St. Francis de Sales in Turin, uh, that you just saw, followed by the small seminary of Mirabello in 1863 and later 1886 by the seminary of Foglizzo. In Mirabello, the complex that was built uh, in a two years period and inaugurated in 1863 was abandoned shortly thereafter and sold to the city, which would uh, then have there the school and the uh, municipal offices. Uh, this is a favor, uh, this is in favor, sorry, of an opportunity created uh, in the Borgo, which is uh, the, uh, the, this uh, ancient uh, area uh, called San Martino, a preferable location given its proximity to a train station where the 18th century villa 
of the Marquis uh, Fernandez uh, uh, Scarampi of Camino, surrounded by a garden and park, became available. So in Mirabello, therefore, the seminary was temporarily abandoned only to reopen in 1938. In Foglizzo, the Cereza of Bonvillaret, the family Cereza di Bonvillaret acceded to this allegiance, a property consisting of uh, a late 18th century mansion of, floor, of four floors above ground. So for four floors and a portico courtyard behind, as well as other small buildings uh, that were built in 1887 and uh, surrounding farmland uh, in uh, 1996. Uh, this property, to this property, the Salesians added a new building in 1897 and a third one in 1936. And the next church, dating back to the first enlargement, is revised, was revised in 1936 when a further intervention was carried out after a long period of abandonment. In both cases, um, the final outcome is uh, that of architectural complexes that translate into practice all those principles that are so important uh, to the Salesian charism in these two cases with processes of adaptation and transformation of the pre-existing buildings uh, in others with ex novo constructions uh, such as in Lanzo Torinese to arrive uh, to, to, uh, to end up with buildings that contribute to the Salesian patrimony coming from hereditary bequests relevant. Uh, that uh, we got in that we got over the years uh, and that respect the architectural characteristics uh, well for the latter the relevance of the assumption of articles 187 of the constitutions uh, is not in question and i'm here referring to uh, i'm quoting uh, Monsignor Ravazzi, is an antidote uh, to the identity of the past. Uh, with this, uh, we are wishing for us to be able to keep working the single only the direction that can valorize the, the heritage, uh, the Salesian heritage, not in a speculative uh, and financial way, but uh, as a way to bring forward a mission uh, that uh, is valued by the safeguarding and protection of intangible intangible goods uh, the value and the originality of this uh, experience uh, Don Bosco Casa Don Bosco will be and can be understood as uh, a launching pad uh, towards a new way of valorizing and um, safeguarding mobile and immobile goods and this comes with an added value that can become an instrument of communication uh, uh, between culture and heritage and the materials uh, uh, that are so uh, valuable to the congregation just one more minute uh, if i may to quote this so in line with what already stated uh, or what, what written in 2018 and in line with uh, the guidelines uh, that were uh, actually um, issued for the ecclesial decommissioning and reuse of churches, uh, which reiterate the importance uh, of the relationship of uh, the uh, immaterial goods um, makes it very uh, clear how we have to take care of the material goods as well and makes it very important to involve the local communities uh, in the new projects uh, that we would like to bring forward these aspects if integrated with virtuous methodological processes of preservation and enhancement and, and valorization sorry of the good can tend to uh, an uh, adaptive reuse um, uh, of uh, the structures uh, following the circular economy model that promotes a systemic approach in which the heritage continues to exchange uh, with the context uh, with which it is inserted or in which it is inserted cultural values, social values, symbolic values, and helps to transform the differences into new opportunities. And I conclude uh, by showing you this uh, last transformation uh, that happened. We uh, have turned this into an, a company, and this is uh, the structure today. And this is the last picture with which we say goodbye, and we thank you for listening.